drinking? What are you drinking, Joe? A little coffee. Don't let the label fool you. It's coffee with uh, coconut milk. We're just discussing. Uh, Is that for your white cutting? No, it's just to wake me up. We're Gaz, angry firm. So, yeah, I'm glad. Hey, what's going on? What's up? Chilling. What's this? Chilling. What's that mean? Uh, it's a sponsor. Brawling Mall. Yeah. Is that your own brand? Huh? See you, bro. What's going on? Steps yeah. too? Yeah. I come forward, you know, and I come and I come to her. Every time I go in there, I always want, you know, to finish the fight impressively. You're gonna get hurt if the ref doesn't step in and do his job. I'm, I'm gonna come, you know, if I knock you out, I'm gonna come and tag you till he gets me off, you know, and that's just how, that's just like the image that I want to portray. It's like, so the next man that, you know, wants to come and think about signing the contract with me, maybe he'll think twice or, you know, just so I can get in his head and know that, you know, if he, if he messes up, makes one mistake, he's gonna get hurt and he's gonna pay for it dearly. Hey, let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. It gets the job, it gets me from A to B, I'll it tell you that. It's not, it's not the prettiest bag out there for sure. He's from Oli Larsen. He's a great fighter. He's a European WC champion. And he's got a big right hand on him. And that's going to put Bukau to the test tonight. Well, Oli Larsen, of course, was the top of the tree for a long time. He's fought a lot of the, uh, the great middleweights. And uh, this is going to be uh, certainly a, a big test for Bukau. My opponent, his name's Oli Larsen. He's. Uh, a veteran. He's been around for a long time, man, and he's uh, he's fought like the who's who of like of, of kickboxing, and he's yeah, he's got a lot of experience, you know. But I, I just feel real confident right now, and I don't feel like anybody's gonna touch me. He's, he comes out, he's aggressive, you know. He's got some power. He, he's coming up a weight class. So he's gonna be bigger. He comes, you know. He's like a bull. He just comes and comes and comes, which is fine with me. It's gonna play right into my my plan, you know, because he's uh, he's got some holes in his game, and I'm gonna expose those holes and. You know, I'm, I'm going to go out with my friends and people who came with me to the fight, and I'm going to enjoy the victory straight up. And it's going to be an impressive one. Put on a show like I always do. I'm at 170. I'm strong, and, and I feel real good right now. I feel unstoppable. So I'm looking to come out. I'm looking to put the pressure on him, and I know that I was blessed with, with power. You know what I mean? So. There's like something to be said about that. Like when I go out, I know that I can. If I touch somebody, I can knock them out. I'm in a good, good spot right now mentally. So. Hey, Jared. Aaron, who's it? Like, good on the bike. Good boy. Good boy. Time for a 12 incher in the non-sexual way. Not cool, man. Okay. Here we are. Hey, it's not all too bad. Man. I got my shit. What, so, right, both of you give me a little fucking piece of camera here. What is this? It's my sandwich, spinach sandwich. Cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Natural, it comes straight from the earth. Doesn't get any better put together than that. <laughs> that looks real tasty. <laughs> pretty good, man. Now I just pretty much train full time and I, and I have a goal in mind and, and you know, I'm not going to stop and, until I, I reach it. You know, and that, that it just involves keep winning, keep knocking people out. And, Keep finishing them however I can, and 
just keep winning fights, not just winning fights, but winning impressively. I'm in love with this fighting thing. It's just like every, everything about it, really. It's not the average person that becomes a fighter, you know. I'm, you really get to see like the true essence of who people are. It's like when you, like you put on the gloves of spar, or like you get in a fight with somebody. It's like you see the true, you know. There's no, there's no hiding. You know what I mean? It's like the, the true person comes out if you get a, get a hold of them long enough, and you know you beat on them long enough, or like you get beat on, and it's like you you really see like the true person's heart and like the true person come out. I couldn't think of anything that I'd want to do more. You know. This is my number one passion in life, and this is what I want to do. I want to make it to the pinnacle of, of the sport, and I want to, you know, I want to make an impact, and I want people to remember me when I leave this, this earth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 83.6. So we've got six kilos to go. Mm. So good. <laughs> We're going to do it! He's got to make it. We're going to do it! Same leg. <laughs> Matching up the official skills. No, that's not the official skill. You're looking kind of happy on the day of the weigh-in. Yeah, I, I feel good, man. I got to tell you, I feel pretty good. I woke up, I saw my weight. I was happy, right? One, 178.8. Dude. Hey. <laughs> what? Right. I'm thinking, holy shit, we're going to have to, I don't know take one of his limbs off or something, you know, for, for today, because his, his weight was really up, it was, it was high. Well, this morning, you know, I go to his room, he's 177 pounds, meaning like, he, he only has to lose 10 pounds of, which is nothing, uh, you know, really. Um, it's impressive, you know, this, this water load thing that he did. What, what did you find out about Joe this morning? <laughs> That we didn't know about him. I sleep naked. <laughs> the motherfucker's a nurse. <laughs> he was a, he, say that he's, again? He, he's a nurse. The, the, the guy's like, you know, went to medical school and shit. No, I didn't go to medical school. I have a, a nursing degree, a two-year nursing what? degree. What? That's still... It's not medical school. No, by like, any stretch. No, no, no. Come on! <laughs> Oh, you want to tell me later? <laughs> Good buddy of mine, Jonathan Nuts, to cut some weight. He's got a nice little private sauna upstairs. Um, pulling out all the stops. Nice little sauna with all the trimmings. So, we're going to his condominium right now, and then um, hopefully we'll be out of there in a couple hours and on weight and ready to collect our, our wind bonuses. The warm glow dances on your cheeks Jonathan Nutt. How are you, sir? Doing all right? I'm good. How are you, sir? My throat hurts. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Why it sounds that, like sounds like you're going to... sounds like I got laryngitis the day before I have to yell into a microphone. I support single moms, too. Yeah, it's just something I do. They need it. They need the help. <laughs> they need education. <laughs> We are at the sauna place. Cutting weight is terrible. It's like you feel like crap, and once you cut the weight, if you do it properly, which I've learned to do it through trial and error over the years, you feel like a beast, man. Like if you know, I've, I've just been you know trial and error, and I've been honing in on it. Need a mangina. Need a mangina. Man, man, mangina. Mangina. What are you doing? Fixing that. Stings. No cameras allowed. No cameras allowed. Get the fool! Get the fuck out of here. Hey, fool! Get the fuck out of here. Hey, hey! Get that shit out of here. Sometimes you feel dead, your body, your head's not reacting, and it's just like, you kind of like, a, you feel like a zombie at times, you know, especially the closer you get to the fight, like fight week, I usually feel like crap, like two weeks out, and you can get frustrated at times, but I just learned, you know, yeah, like I, I look like shit when I, when I spar, and I, and I look like shit when I train, but 
I always, you know, when the lights go on, I always perform, and you know, I perform better than than I train. What I tell you? What? Get your ass back in that sauna. Yeah. Come on, boss. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, wait, Come on, get it. Get it. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, Hello. mate. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? Hey, you're laying all the air up, motherfucker. Close that shit. We told you, no cameras allowed. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Feel like a million bucks. Feel like a million baht. Million baht. <laughs> you get that pound allowance. Yeah, it's one seventy one. You're under. Yeah. You're you're here. Hey. Yeah. That's it. You're done. Yeah, put me up to run. Is he on? Yeah, he's on. Sure. Feel good? Yeah, feel oh, good. Bro. Happy man. Look at his smile. You have a nickname, Joe? The nurse. I like it. The nurse. The nurse. Yep. I like it. I bollocks it. I bollocks it. From this day on, the nurse. People try to stick me with nicknames. Nothing sticks. This is sticking. I'm slippery, bro. This is sticking. The I'm nurse. Slippery. Welcome to Dare Fight Sports. Exactly what you're doing is what you need to be doing at this moment in time. Dare Fight Sports here. We keep it casual. You know what I mean? This is just a bunch of guys hanging out that just like to see other guys fight. And that's what we do here. So that's what we're getting ready for. This is the weigh-ins of the Rebels of MMA show. We look to fuck people up in the best ways possible, but keep it casual. There he is. The man that I couldn't even think of a nickname for because his real name is so fucking awesome. For Joe Ray, ladies and gentlemen, take off your shirt and make everybody feel bad about themselves. I walk into the, the weigh-in and I walk up the stairs and, and step on the scales. I get a lot out of the stair downs, yeah. Even if it's just to like, you know, get close to them and just get a feel, kind of like, all right, here we are, you know. His opponent, who we all know and love, a round of applause, for the Iron Fist, Ola Larson, doing the sport right. You know, you get those like, emo you get those nerves, and you get those emotions, and you get like that kind of, not like a hatred, but like a, you know, you get antsy, like you want to like, feel like, oh, it's finally here, you know, it's the, the fool I've been training for to like, knock this this guy's head off, you know what I mean? And here he is, right in front of me, you know? And, and it feels it feels good to get a lot of different emotions running through here. So how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm just hanging out here watching a little uh, mindless television. How's your weight? Yeah, weight's good. About probably back up to about 190. 190? Yeah, I feel real good. I just went for a nice little run and. Uh, so what are you doing? Just put a little wheat grass in. It's uh, helps alkalize the body and uh, kills some of that acid. Neutralizes, not kills it, neutralizes some of the acid in there. And I guess you could say it kills it. But, uh, you know, it's not, it doesn't taste as bad as it looks, put it that way. Just sip on this puppy. How long to the fight? Uh, time's at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think I fight, show starts at six, so. I don't know how long it's going to take. Probably, probably fight early, maybe like seven or seven thirty. What's the game plan? Uh, go in there, and smash, cash my win bonus, and uh, look for the after party. Just the thrill. It's like a, the ultimate high. Going, going in there, and you get no, no high like that. And like a nice, impressive win in front of your friends, in front of family, in front of like national television. It just you know, you can't put them into words. It's just like something that you have to experience. Anybody who's ever been there on that stage and and has has gotten a win or you know experience anything like that knows what i'm talking about but if you don't you know it's just it's amazing and it's just it's addicting how you feeling bro yeah i feel good man it's tired like i hate waiting around you know what i mean it's like hurry up and wait i just want to fight it's just like the worst part i don't really look at it as a sport first of all i have to see it as a, a fight you know you can call it whatever you want but the other guy's coming out trying to hurt you you know he he'd probably kill me if he could i think you know and there he is, here I am. And, you know, it's like we're going to beat on each other until one of us breaks. You know, every time you beat somebody, you take a little piece of their soul. I found that to be true over the years, you know, because I've been beat and it kind of took a little something out of me, you know, whether I thought I could beat him or not. 
it takes a little piece of you. You share an experience, like a life experience that you'll take with you for the rest of your life. You know, whether you win or lose, it's like that person's always with you. To the ring, you will have the fighter inspectors to your Vaseline, do all the things for you, and then you're good to go. Oliver Coste or Julio S will be in the, in the ring and will show you your corner. All right? Everybody okay? That's how we're gonna go. So let's get this show started. Thank you, everybody. Cage, I get the butterflies and the nerves start going away and you know I start to get a little bit more excitement. I get the crowd feeding in on it. You know, I feed off the energy regardless you're getting booed, you know, or you're getting cheered, it's getting you start to get excited and ready to go showtime. I, I'll go in there and I'm prepared to die like every time I go in there. That's just the kind of mindset I've adopted. You can kind of relate it to like the old days, you know, it's like you could either get in a fight or just like kill or be killed. I'm not gonna give up. When I get in the cage, I'm coming, whoever's across from there, I'm, I'm coming to hurt them and I'm coming to hurt them bad. I have some strategy behind me, but event, the eventual goal is I want to, I want to, you know, get, lean on them. And I want to, I want to hurt them and, and run them over. You know, if ands or buts about it. I'm not going in there to win. I'm going in there to make a statement. You know, to keep it clean. Make, I'm make a statement. Starts out in flurry. Joe Ray, the younger of the two, both striking experts. Bigger, more powerful man right now. Ole, much more experienced. Living in Bangkok, Thailand, trading at a Tiger Muay Thai American top team. And these guys are trading and make it exciting and make it action packed. But right now, as you can see, it stays standing. And Ole, and Ole getting rocked with the left hook by Joe Ray. Moving, raised the left hook. And he gets the takedown from the body lock. And his left knee in. And Joe Ray with the sweep and the flurry on the stand-up, sprawling out, using the knees to the body, making space, elbows to Ole. Stutton with a jab, a little more narrow, coming in much the aggressor, using his, having his young age to his advantage. Dig him with that right straight, nice takedown by Joe Ray. Now Joe Ray on top, in great position for the Katagatami. This round could very well be a draw. Chasing down the clinch, getting his head free. Gotta be active here, guys. Hands up. Joe Ray's gotta keep his hands up, not get dug in that brawling style. Good double leg by Joe Ray, but not real pop in the end. Ole now shooting on the double. Joe Ray digging up the underhook, going for the Kimura lock defense. He does have the Kimura trap. He's turning Ole Larson over with the Kimura lock. Getting in top position. Can he finish? Great reversal after getting rocked. Still in the game, Joe Ray. Smart mind, smart body. And that's round two in the books for you guys. Excellent fight so far, both Joe Ray and Ole Larson. Joe Ray, Ole Larson, this third round is crazy. Both guys using that minute to catch their breath, looking much better than the end of last round. And Ole really wants that power right hand, and Joe Ray with excellent jabs and elbows. He seems to be the quicker of the two. Ole not giving a fuck. That was nasty. And Joe Ray stops the takedown, takes the mount. Excellent work by Joe Ray. So far, this fight, in my opinion, is one round each. This is the one that will decide. This could be finished by the 
head and arm triangle choke. Joe Ray mobilizing, and he passes into the mount. Joe Ray needs space. This is the position he wants to be in. He needs to get up and get to attack. Oh my gosh. And he takes the cutting oh atomic, finishing Ole Larson in the third round. Excellent fight by both parties. Performance wasn't up to par, but uh, you know, I felt like I, 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 I proved to myself, you know, like it was either at the end it was either do or die. Either I had to get the sub or I had to finish him in some sort, and uh, that's like one of my good moves. And please start making your way towards the exits. Thank you, sir. Stuart Cooper of Stuart Cooper Films. My name is Ben Stark. I am the technical analyst and commentator for Dare Fight Sports. What you just witnessed was an awesome fight between Iron Fist Ole Larson and Joe Ray. That shit was crazy. Fireworks, fucking bonkers. It was everything you thought it would be and then more. Surely a fight of the year candidate throughout the world, if not surely in Asia. There was striking, there was takedown, there was grappling, there was submission work, there was ground and pound. There was people getting rocked, there was dudes getting taken down, there was everyone hitting everyone and it was fucking awesome. My main man and good friend Joe Ray came out with the win, Katagatami in the third. Huge event, huge night, first legal MMA event in all of Thailand. Dare fight sports, Rebels of MMA, Joe Ray taking the win in the main event. Great night, good work, awesome work to Joe Ray, great work to you Stuart Cooper and Stuart Cooper Films. Great, talk to you soon, see you later, let's go to the after party. No, I cannot. Oh, what do you think, coach? Victory party. Hell of a victory party. Man, I don't know if Joe Ray wants to go to a victory party. I think Joe Ray might need an ice bath. Wow. But he finished with the Stu Cooper special, which is kind of cool. Slightly gratifying. And uh, it saved us a nervous judge's decision, which is helpful. Stuart! Hey! We did it! Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank right. you. Appreciate it. Yeah, the fight was, uh, you know, I felt real comfortable coming out. And he, he came in, he was real aggressive. Not as aggressive as I thought he was going to be, but at the beginning, anyways, I thought he was just going to come out guns blazing, but, you know, he didn't. He, I think he respected my power, respected his, too, you know? And uh, he um, came out game like I knew he would, and just uh, tried, to tried to establish the jab, and I felt like I did that. He hit me with a good shot or something, and then I was like, I think the game plan went out the window at that point, for a little bit anyways, and I just tried to, like, we were bombing on each other exactly what I wasn't supposed to be doing, but, you know, shit happens, and we kind of got into, like, a little brawl mode, and I got pretty tired, you know, and uh, fight went to the ground, and he ended up on top of me first, and I just kind of tied him up, and I don't remember what happened. I think I maybe got the sweep, or I don't, I don't, and then I got on top of him, or I was trying to establish a... You know, some shoulder pressure, round ended, and then we came out, and he came out blazing in second. I was pretty tired, you know, but I was just trying to dig, and he came out, and, and he got a takedown on me, which I wasn't too happy about, you know, and then I came out, and I just tried to dig the, the third round. I was trying to set the jab back up and just kind of take my time, take a step back, and uh, I ended up, you know, on, on top of him. Basically, who wants it more? You know, I, was, I got on top of him, and I was able to, like, the arm triangle was kind of there, you know, and I was able to to grab that and I sunk it in and once I had it I, I knew that puppy was, was mine, you know what I mean? And passed it and, and sunk it in and that was a wrap, you know what I mean? And we were drilling that all week, you know, and it was just that's like one of my good bread and butter moves and you know you Stuart, which is the guy behind the camera, but you guys don't know that, uh, was uh, you know, just kinda threw me some details of it, you know, like we were just working honing in on a few little details that helped me out and it ended up helping me out at the end and like I was here in the corner you know, it's saying little things to me, and but yeah, that arm triangle is like butter, man. Once I get that thing, it's like, it's good, you know? So, it's a wrap, and, that, and that's my sixth win in a row by finish, you know? So, I'm on a tear, man, like, you know, 
my main coach couldn't be here this time, Rob Judah back home. He's been with me like my mentor and, you know, taking me under his wing and I've been on a tear with him lately, but just uh, it feels good to be a winner, man, I'll tell you that. The guys here at Tiger, you know, stepped in and it feels like a team, a team out here, you know, it's like, it's good to be part of that. Like, you know, the training partners and all that and the coaches and, you know, they've been there, done that, and so they know what it takes and, and not only that, they're good, co they're not only they're great fighters, but they're good coaches because you could have like the best fighter in the world I've had, you know, and and they could be like shit for coaches, but these guys actually care, you know. Yeah, like they got their own things going on, they got their own fights coming up, but they'll take the time and they'll put the time in, you know, and it, it really, like, it, being a, a veteran, you, you could tell, you know, like it shines through, like you could tell if somebody doesn't give a shit or, you know, if they really care, and they really care, they got the knowledge and, you know, they want to help you out, and, and it really, it feels good to be a part of something like that, you know, it feels good to be a part of Tiger Muay Thai, you know what I mean? So I mean, it, it's very easy for me to talk to you, Stu. Uh, what do I reckon? I reckon that was a war. I mean, uh, that was an absolute war. Overall, the whole evening went fantastic. I mean, we couldn't kind of ask for anything more. It, it was like the Joe Ray, uh, you know, this is the thing too. Ben and I were sitting there in the booth. If that had gone to the judges, it could have, it could have like very well he could have uh, lost that. I mean. Ole was getting punched in the face and smiling like he always does, you know what I mean? He was walking through shots, taking shots to the face like a porn star, dude. That guy was amazing. Ole Larson's amazing, dude. But, obviously, always there is a winner, and the Joe Ray came out on top tonight, man. My voice is gone. My voice is absolutely gone. I still think, uh, yeah, tonight was by far the best Air Fight Sports event that we've had. The first one above ground in, in a while, you know what I mean? And, uh... You know, how can you ask for anything more, man? They went three rounds, almost went to the decision, but no. Upset. Upset. You know what I mean? Joe Ray crushed it the way Joe Ray does. He said he was going to do what he did, and he did it. And you can't do any better because now you're in Bangkok. You're going to go out and party like a rock star. Your city is 24 hours, ours is 72. Peace, bitches. Winning is what you do all this training for, is like all this ball busting work, this stupid diets, this, you know, this stupid weight cuts and all this training when you're like busted up, you don't feel like coming in, your joints hurt, you gotta wake up in the morning to run, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta stretch, you gotta hit the pool. That's what it is, man. It's like for that win because of that feeling you get, it's like the culmination of all the hard work that goes into everything when you get that hand raise, man. I'm telling you, there's no other feeling like it.